Right, guys. It's going to be a little discussion video, this. Um, our opinion, this will be. Um, so it's not fact, it is our opinion. We are going to today decide really what is our favourite engine. I haven't really thought much about this. Um, we all know that I like the Cosworth because obviously I specialised in the Cosworth YB engine. So that for me is, I suppose, one of my favourites. But I guess this is more really a what era and type of engine do we prefer and do we think is best? Now, when I say best, best is a bit of a grey area, I suppose, because they're all pretty good and pretty bad in their own ways. But what I'm going to do is split this, split the engine types into probably four ways. So from what we deal with, we are going to go, we're going to go vintage, classic, modern diesel, modern petrol. I think that's really sort of um, fair to split it into four to start with and, and see and see where we go from there really. But I think your vintage engines, I suppose, a bit like your Rostin 7s, anything that's sort of side valve, that sort of thing, they're, they're probably the, the vintage, the most vintage engines we get involved with. Then you've got your classic engines, TR6s, TR4s, up to the Cosworths and stuff like that. And then we get into the more modern petrols. So I'm talking modern as in late 90s early 2000s to present and then obviously your modern diesels we don't deal with a lot of the the older diesels like the 90s stuff uh, we don't tend to get involved with that too much now the only thing we get involved with probably the earliest thing we get involved with as you all know from some of our warranty videos are like the transits and the sprinters now if we start with the vintage stuff i personally don't like the vintage stuff. A lot of people do like it, and I suppose their argument is it's they're very simple, they're easy to work on, um, you can work on them at the side of the road, things like that. I mean, John, my business partner, he's got an Austin 7 special and he's got a little, you know, a little Austin 7 engine in it that's a bit tuned up, a bit tweaked. And yes, you can argue that, that you are they're easy to work on and they're simple and what have you but there's a reason for that because they need to be because you are always working on them um, so the problem is when we build them and the reason I don't like building them is because they I find them as simple as they are to actually build they're quite finicky um, you can tell when you compare them to more modern engines even the classic stuff like the the 60s and upwards and that they are you can tell that where the progression has come in everything's a bit of an afterthought so you you know they don't design the engine easy to to get to everything you know some things what you'd think were quite easy to get to are actually quite hard so i personally don't like working on them you know on side valves it can be an absolute arse just to get the valve springs on so yeah not my favorite um although they are very simple in their own rights and they are you know you can work on them on the side of the road i think it's more so that the cars are so basic you can get everything you know it's a little bit like a kit car um so yeah not a favorite for me then if we go into the classic stuff so we're talking you know sort of 60s up to the late 80s even sort of mid 90s that sort of engine i think i would say over engineered um it's all brick outhouse it's a lot easier to build the only thing we struggle on with with those type of engines the gaskets you know the the actual fitment of everything is not like the modern stuff um so in re that respect yeah it's a little bit it's a lot easier than the the vintage stuff to build i would say but it's still you've got to get everything right you've got to get, every, get everything clean but the overall materials and that i do prefer you know everything's reborable and you know everything's reconditionable which i do like all the sizes are available um so yeah that side of it i do like and i do like the the sort of simplicity especially when later on when they started making the 16 valve twin cams and stuff like that yeah very simple and nice with the hydraulic lifters lovely to build and that's why i enjoy building the cosworth so that is probably one of the top ones for me 
Then if we move into the sort of, I suppose, the modern diesels, modern diesels, no one can argue that the performance on them is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, they're economical, they go really well, um, but the only thing we don't like on those engines is all the crap around it that can damage the engine. You know, on an older engine, we know if the engine wears out and if it's tired, you know that it's just done X amount of miles. And But these days, with these diesels, they're getting all these niggly problems. All the manufacturers have their own niggly problems, and it's usually down to something external to the engine causing it, like emission stuff, you know, either DPS, EGRs, um, your breather system, injectors a lot of the time, they cause absolute havoc, you know, they've got these real high pressure injectors um, and they've, they've got to be, they're cr it's critical that they're right. You know, people think even an old van now, say a, a 15, 20 year old van, it might look like a heap of crap, but it's got a real high tech, highly tuned diesel engine in it. You know, people forget that. So it's all right. You know, a lot of our warranty videos in the past have come from these diesel engines because people want to fix them for cheap, but they don't understand that they have to be right. You know, everything external has to be pucker. And usually, like I've said to you before, convincing them that it, you need to get all these things externally right once the engine's gone because that's probably what's caused it they don't seem to understand that so having an engine done is one thing but when i've said to you before that usually it's rule of thumb is whatever the engine costs to do it's going to be twice that to repair everything else so yeah they don't really understand that they don't do it and then they wonder why they get into trouble and that's one reason one why we have these warranty videos to do with them and two while we run into why we don't really like doing them um, because of the warranty side so yeah they're nice to build don't get me wrong everything sort of fits it's a modern type engine um, the only thing I don't like about the diesels is they're absolutely caked in crap and to get them anywhere near rebuilding standards you have to spend a lot of hours cleaning and blasting and, and painting and what have you and it's a very messy job don't like them really uh, so if we move into modern petrols i'll be honest with you when we first started running into getting involved with modern petrols because you've got things say for instance the bmws we've got there was a, a time when the bmws and stuff like that they were getting a bit cheaper they were getting a bit sort of down the road um, second-hand cars were cheaper people wanted to fix them on a budget but at the end of the day they again a bit like the diesels they're a, a sort of a finely tuned you know accurately built engine um, and to do anything with they they need to be done absolutely properly and not only that but a lot of the bits like um, a lot of the bits are not reusable like the bolts you know on an older engine you can reuse all the bolts um, but these days you have to replace main bolts big end bolts you know cam poly bolts the whole lot and it's a lot of it's genuine stuff so that can run into the cost big time um, although the last couple of years two or three years now some of these younger boys it seems like are getting hold of these bmws the value's gone up um, they look they want to tune them they don't mind throwing a few quid and they seem to accept the fact um, because they've all been involved with it now for a few years, all the tuning side, they seem to know and expect what it's going to cost. So providing that and providing that the engine has not had any real troubles and they don't they seem to and they do understand how much potentially it could cost, the forged builds, as in we take an engine that hasn't really got money problems um, and strip it to build it with forged internals and what have you, I think they're getting to the point where I hate to say it, but I, I do like doing them almost as, I'd say, on par with the Cosworths and stuff because when they're all cleaned, um, when you've measured everything and they're all within tolerance, like this BMW I said about in the last video or two um, with the Nicosil bores, I d they are nice to build, you know, everything seems like it's, the gaskets are nice, the face-to-face -face fits are nice, when you've got all the new nice 
bolts and what have you. Yeah, I've, uh, like I say, I hate to say it, but they are becoming one of my favorite sort of engines to build. You know, the Hondas, the Duratex, the BMWs, things like that. I do like them. I've done a few now. In the last two or three years, we seem to have done quite a few. Um, so for a, from a building perspective, I'm gonna have to say, I do think I like these modern type motors, but the forged builds, mind. Um, the only trouble is with the Cosworths and stuff like that, like you, you, we're running into problems now where a lot of people have had their hands on them. Um, although the guys, because the cars are worth so much, they don't mind spending a few quid on them. It's getting very difficult to get bits. We're finding that even even sort of off the shelf um, bearings, you know, replaceable parts are getting hard to come by. Um, prices are varying like anybody's business, a bit like everything at the moment. They're coming in various states. They're becoming harder and harder to get back to uh, an original quality. So yeah, I think as much as I do love the Cosworths and I seem to sort of know everything about them, that's, they're almost, getting to the point where I do prefer these modern type motors. So I think, yeah, guys, if I've got to make a decision on what my favorite engine is to build, John's definitely going to say different, um, but I do like maybe the modern petrols, the Type R's, the, the BMWs, the, the Duratex, um, things like that. I do like under decent circumstances, obviously, and I do like doing the forge builds, the motorsport stuff. Um, that's another thing. There is a world of difference between a competition engine and a normal engine. So yeah, I love doing the competition stuff. I love doing the modern competition stuff. Um, yeah, for me, I think that's the way forward these days. So hopefully we get a lot more of that. So on the other end of the scale, guys, You've heard me talk in the past about electric vehicles. Uh, we did at one point toy with getting an electric van. Um, but yesterday afternoon, my partner's brother came around with his new vehicle. So I'm just going to show you a little snippet of what it is and, uh, and what we thought about that. And yeah, see what you guys think. So my missus's brother's just turned up in his new Tesla 3. So, you know, we were talking a while ago about um, electric vehicles. He's just about to take me out in this guy, so I'm going to take you for a little spin with me. Goes completely against what we do, but um, yeah, let's see what these things go like. Sam's on YouTube. <laughs> so what is what model is this, mate? Model 3 Performance. Is it? So what's the difference with the performance? It's a little bit faster. <laughs> All right. What has it got? Diff ba different batteries and different motor and that, or what? Well, it's a dual motor. Oh, is it? I'm most probably not the best person to speak to about the technicality of it. No, probably not, but <laughs> it's nice though. But it's scarily fast. Is it? Yeah. We'll see, Sam, we'll see. Go and get your Lambo out. Well, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't know whether I want to really. <laughs> it might embarrass me. This is no good for you, Lee, for your business. No, but this is the thing, this is what I was saying. Yeah, don't you start trashing on it. Huh? <laughs> No, I was talking about these a while ago. It'd be funny, I'd be calling you when I'm broke down. Leg, you come yeah. down. You'll be there with your camera. See, I told you all. It auto brakes. I am intrigued to see how fast they are, though. What? It auto brakes. Oh, does it? It just brakes itself. Really weird. Yeah, but I suppose it does all the braking off the motor and that, doesn't it? Or no? <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, it's just like instant torque, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> yes, I'm going to lose my license. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the mirror. That's all in the past. <laughs> He's gone. Nice seats though in the back. It's so comfortable. Yeah, it's nice, nice trim and that, isn't it? I like the minimalistic on the yeah, steering wheel. Yeah, that's what I was just saying to Dad. Like it just nothing there. There's nothing out. No. It's a bit awkward though because that's where you do your gear, like your reverse neutral and drive. Oh, that's yeah. where my window wiper used to be. Ah, right. So there we go, guys. I think that's about enough for that. There's no denying that the performance is absolutely incredible. The range on it seems 
absolutely unbelievable. Whether the figures are legit or whether they are sort of down a mine shaft with a wind behind you, who knows? Um, it, I suppose it all depends on where you're driving and your driving conditions and that. But yeah, very impressive performance. Obviously, we couldn't do, we couldn't sort of record much more because the traffic was quite bad and obviously the speed limits applying. Um, but yeah, obviously it goes completely against our business. But is it the future? I'm going to leave you guys to comment down below and decide for yourself. I think for me, the infrastructure at the minute doesn't seem quite there. I don't know whether I could be too bothered with the, the overwhelming range anxiety on it, um, especially living where we live, because we're sort of, sort of 100 miles from everywhere, really. Um, but yeah, I don't know, guys. What do you think about that? Well, guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you think on today's video. Look out for Friday's video, it's going to be a really interesting one. Um, as you can see, the bottom of the kit car there, there's no diff in there, so look out for that one. Uh, we've got some more news on the Lagonda. So, um, yeah, plenty of, plenty of progress here, guys, but look out for Friday's. Thank you very much for watching. Until another video, like, subscribe, and we will see you in another one. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.